Good morning. Today is the 25th of June of 2014, and we are at the Cahokia Mounds World Historic Center area that is between Collinsville and Fairmont City, right across the Mississippi River from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. I am at what's called Woodhenge. It's a recreation of an ancient sun sundial. It isn't real light out here. As you can see, there are posts set in the ground every so many degrees, it's ever so many feet apart. And you got a and it's a gigantic circle that they've reconstructed from what they found when they were digging up here around here to recreate this ceremonial and kind of like an astronomical observatory here way off if you look straight out in front let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here this post has two white uh, bands painted on it and that is the post that should be straight east okay as we go over this direction this post here which has a single white band that is the post that is the spot where the sun will come up at the summer solstice and if we go back the other direction there's the east post and this post that has another single band December 21st not here a little bit right before Christmas the Sun will rise on this post and it's conjectured to wait for the train to quit honking uh, that they use this to close to the river and you can hear the river boat horns going off uh, the priests use this they would tell the people that they had the power to stop the Sun from going too far south or going too far north and they could make it go back the other direction so they'd have a week of ceremony and stuff to prove that they had the power and such and such is that's where the story goes anyway but the reason I'm down here is I wanted to use this opportunity I'm going to make three total videos in this little series I'm doing on how the Sun where it comes up in relationship to the day of the year the middle of June it comes up to the north in the spring and fall it comes up straight in the east and in the winter time it comes up down in the south. Now this is oh, it's not 45 degrees I'd say maybe 30 something approximately there. I'm gonna keep the camera where the Sun's gonna be coming up and when the time comes it should come up right right next to this post here right behind it. Now the reason I'm doing this is depending on what time of year you know everybody says well you follow this you want to watch where the Sun comes up and that's the East Well, that's not necessarily true it's your 30 on the uh, spring and fall equinox it's it rises in the East but if you're in the middle of the summer around the first day of summer I mean and the first day of winter you're you're gonna be way off and if you're trying to navigate you need to know what day it is so you can make some kind of a calculation so you're not too far off if you don't have a compass 
and that's the reason I'm doing this I want you to be able to see where the Sun is coming up in relationship to these posts in the ground hopefully this uh, it's not real light out yet but hopefully you can see the difference in the in the area but not all people know this I I've watched the Sun come up working midnights for the last 30 years so I kind of know I'm used to that but not everybody realizes that it doesn't do that so I thought I'd make this video and I'm gonna make another one in September showing it coming up on this other on the eastern post rising there and hopefully if the weather's uh, cooperative I'll come back in December and do another one then then I'll post them right close together and it'll be real easy to see the difference of uh, where the sun's coming up at different times of the year it's kind of hard to see but right behind the uh, eastern post is what's called Monk's Mound it's about 100 feet tall and it's just a gigantic pile of dirt that the Mississippian uh, culture that lived in this area built as a place for their high priest or their king whatever they wanted to call him he had a house on top of that or a palace whatever you want to call it and luckily they discovered that what this place was and kept it from getting destroyed too bad they tore a lot of it up when they put interstate 70 through here and that's when uh, the big push was made to try and save all this and they've been reclaiming a lot of the land that was taken for other use as time and funds allow it's a pretty neat place if you're ever in st louis area and you got time you should come out here and spend a half a day or whatever there's a gigantic interpretive center that uh has a lot of exhibits and a lot of knowledge and there's a movie theater that kind of shows what happened here this is the oldest the, this was the largest city in North America before the Europeans came for probably a thousand years this was a place of commerce travel uh, shared culture among all the different areas in what what's now the United States and there's even been uh, a lot of things found from way way far away when they've been doing diggings around here so it was isn't wasn't something it was a major source of travel and commerce for the entire United States and they estimate there was 30 to 40,000 people living in this one spot when it was at its peak and look back over here as you can see we're looking at the eastern post and the sun's just about to come up and as soon as it pops which it's getting ready to here in just a minute I'll close this out and then we'll try to come back in uh, couple of months on sept around September the 21st I wasn't able to get out here on the solstice because of the weather and I was working so I couldn't get out here and be here when the Sun came up but I just wanted to I'm off today and I had a chance to come here and do this one so hoping that this it's not real light and the lighting's not perfect so I hope that it comes out okay I'm gonna do another pan around here see these posts I was at a uh, talk one day and the gentleman who actually cut these posts and set them was there giving the talk and every one 
fact about these posts in this circle every one of these was hand cut with a stone axe they decided that since it was an ancient recreation of something that happened long ago they wanted to do it the way it was done back then so they actually went out and found these are all cedar trees and they found these cedar trees wherever they got them I don't wouldn't know that but they were hand cut and cut down with a stone axe and then all of the limbs and stuff were trimmed accordingly I'm at the, the center post in the middle of the circle here I'll see if I can get a look give you an idea of what looks like these are like I said these are cedar so they should last a very very long time and it's been probably 10 years since that guy gave that talk and he was getting up in age then so I don't even know if he's around anymore we'll go back to the eastern side and as you can see the sun's coming up and it's getting real close to coming up over the cutting the thing there I thought I was gonna have to mark these but they've already done it for us they've painted the post so you know which what the northern uh, limits gonna be and what the southern limit will be by those paint markers that they made it's about quarter to six in the morning as sunrise was at 532 or something so it's gonna take it a little while to get up over these trees but it's almost there Well, it may take another 10 or 15 minutes for that to get up above the trees. So I'm going to do a little bit, a little small pan. You can see what, what the uh, general idea is here. I said that was the northeast point. This is the eastern point. I said in December, sun, if the weather cooperates and I can get a video of it this is where it'll come up and around the winter solstice right here so I hope that this will help people understand a little bit more about navigating in the wilderness and how the uh, position of the Sun is relative to where you're trying to go but you do have to know kind of know what day of the year it is and calculate off of that point it's probably from uh, the fall and spring equinoxes there's probably maybe a third to a half a degree every day that the Sun moves you in the appropriate direction Till it gets to the one point and then it stays in that spot for about a week and then it starts moving back the other direction but as you can see from this point over to this point if you're gonna lay in a course that's gonna make a heck of a difference if you're traveling very far if you're moving 30 40 degrees and you're heading 30 degrees off of where you want to go you could end up really lost really quick it wouldn't take long here in Illinois, you can't walk more than, except for the very southern tip where the Shawnee National Forest is, you probably can't walk more than two miles without hitting a road anyway. It isn't that big big of an issue in this state, but you get out 
west where the uh, there's thousands and thousands of acres without no roads in it. This would be something that'd be real good to know. One last look at the area where the sun's come up. It's just about to come over the trees, but I'm not going to just stand here for 10 or 15 minutes waiting for it to come up. So I'm going to sign off for now, and we will continue this around the 21st of September.